ad advice to young artists always uh, print out your questionnaires. So you need to ask we, we can pretend we're talking so you got some B-rolls. Hit record. Yeah. We can just pretend yeah. we're talking. We just, we can I'll just make yeah. motions with my you hands. Just, you kind of have to make it look real. You can just push left and right because the audience will know immediately you're just faking <laughs> it. Uh, kinda, um, so, when you first started doing your photography business, yeah. what, uh, what, what was your initial equipment list? Um, that's funny, because I actually have that with me. My initial equipment was my college camera. I have a Nikon FM2N. It's different from the FM2, because it's the FM2N. It got a titan or, well, it got a, a shutter that can go on any of the speeds without a battery. I have, I have that camera from college. I took it with me from San Francisco to New York in, at the end of 2001. I have that and a lens or two. And then whatever lens, I, whatever equipment I bought later, I bought them with the money I make from, uh, uh, for shooting photography. So you grew your equipment list from your profits, from oh, the yeah, business? Of yes, theater. The, whatever business you engage in, you gotta make your money. Without that money, it's impossible for you to grow. So for a young person who wants to turn his photography into a business, what would your advice be? Um, well, in a nutshell, the first thing I would say is to learn a business. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we do as a in, you know, for a lot of people as an entry-level photographer, they're going to be fueled by passion. It's easy to let that passion die if you struggle in a business. So learning the business you know, it seems boring, it seems kind of counterintuitive to the whole follow your dream thing. But you know what, in order to keep your dream going, you need to stay in a business. So learning the business, it might be old fashioned, it might be really boring, but learning the business of photography is very important. Doesn't matter where it is, uh, what field you engage in. You can, you can be an illustrator, you can be a graphic motion artist or photographer. Uh, learning the business, the particular niche that you want to be in, and multiple niches, the niche that you want to be in, how that business is conducted and learn that skill. That's gonna be very important and allow you to keep on pursuing your passion. Because once that passion runs out, you don't have a functional business, you cannot do it anymore. At what point do you think um, a photographer should get an LLC or something of that nature? Uh, as soon as they start, well, as soon as they start or when they start making money. Um, you know, filing with an LLC, because if you're gonna have clients writing your checks or sending your money, it shouldn't go to your own personal account. You could, as long as you know exactly what's coming in, did all, all your all your work, all your uh, bookkeeping clearly. Uh, you file the taxes, but it's much easier if you have an LLC, an LLC bank account, and all the money goes in there. You know exactly how much comes in, how much goes out. So no confusion. It'll save you a lot of time, a lot of money later on, and a lot of headache as well. It'll save you from that headache. If you had five tips to give to a young photographer, what would you give them? Well, um, for, well, I'll say uh, up and coming photographers. It, you don't have to be young to be a good photographer, that's the thing. Or an up and coming photographer. You can be mid age, like me, you know? But wait, there's more. We're essentially giant children. Um, so, yeah. Um, so in conclusion, you know, the first tip I would give for any, um, you know, up and coming or aspiring photographer um, or any creative professionals, it's easy to be you know, blindsided by our passion. It's very important to learn a business. So that would be my tip number one. And tip number two would be, you know, while you, you feel by passion and knowledge of business, it doesn't hurt to know a lot, a lot, a lot about the field that you engage in. The technical stuff are very important. The creative side is always important, always engage in the field, always engage in, you know, don't ever get into a point where you feel that, oh, I'm so, I'm, I'm so smart, I don't really need, you know, all the stuff that people do, ah, I don't, I don't really care for those. You know, it doesn't matter what you care or not, you want to see what people are doing, you want to see what, what's popular out there, what's not popular out there, and you can get inspired from that. Okay? And number three, you know, always do your homework, doesn't matter what you should, it doesn't hurt to know, you know, it doesn't matter if you're researching just to replicate the same shoot, but know how to do it, know how to replicate the same shoot, will make it a whole lot different than, you know, 
don't just jump in and say, I'll let my creativity take over. Yeah, that's great, but it doesn't hurt to research and know what you're doing um, for that particular job as well. Um, and number four, I'll say, you know, tip number four, I'll say it's very important uh, to arrive on time. And by on time, I mean 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour of what you think on time should be. You know, it's always, it's always easier to get there, relax, have some time to set up and do all that stuff. You know, set up before you even start setting up. You know, that will really put you in a relaxed mode. That's very important too. It will, it will go, it will, uh, it will allow you to have a, a, a peace of mind uh, before the shoot, before any job that you do, especially you need that time, you need that mind to focus on, on the creativity that you need to put into, uh, into physical manifestation. That's very important. And, uh, and tip number five, that's going to be very important. I um, mean, I have that in mind, but I kind of... Uh, we'll hold there. Yeah, we'll hold and there. I'll take this moment to mention that I was four hours late to the shoot. Oh, you were? Really? No way. <laughs> I, I, for, the, for those of you viewing at home, uh, tip number four is a big one. And so lastly, um, I think I, not sure if I mentioned passion. Um, that's not going to be tip number five because you already have that. So you don't need that tip. Tip number five is to dress for the job. You know, if you want to do archery, you dress for the job. You want to do, if you are shooting, uh, aiming at quote unquote, uh, if you're aiming for, you know, a, uh, a director or a photographer, you know, you want to know, uh, either you want to blend in or want to stand out, you want to know what to wear for the, uh, for the job. Don't overdress, don't underdress. Uh, but you know, fit in. Um, you know, don't. Uh, you. It's kind of like your portfolio, right? You want to. You want to display the work. That you want to. Be, that you want to shoot over and over and over again. You don't want to deliver the work that you're not proud of. So dress in a way that you feel proud of for that particular day. And that would be my tip number five. There's tip number five. Um, as far as portfolio goes, how how does one do that? Uh, well, I'm assuming for a lot of photographers, they already know how to shoot. They already have things that they shoot. Uh, personal projects are great, but sellable um, photos are also great. Sellable portfolios either you know create the photos that you want to be higher on. That means having the funding to hire your own models, your own makeup artists, your own space rent, all that stuff. Um, you know that's one way to create your portfolio. That's very important. And um, you know don't. Because what you're, at the end of the day, people will judge you by the work that you present. So are you proud of the work that you're showing to people? Um, the work that you show to people will be the work that people hire you to reproduce. A lot of times it's really that. So how are you going to create a portfolio? Either by, again, your own money, your own time. That's very important. Um, and or, you know, it depends on the job that you do. When you are contracted to, to photograph, to shoot, if you have your own clients, those work you will be will, will be your portfolio you slowly build it you do not come overnight uh, you will have to slowly build it either on the job or on your own time on your own time with your own money and your everything on your own